So the surface appearance instance allows you to override the appearance of a mesh part with a set of PBR materials. And these PBRs are texture images or maps. Maybe I should also zoom it in a little bit. And here we have different examples of surface appearances being applied to different meshes. There is also this PBR textures guide right here. And just in short so you don't have to read the whole guide, the PBR textures allow you to represent realistic shading and lightning. And here on the surface appearance I'm going to explain the instance in studio, same with all of its properties right here. So let's also get a mesh part and I am just going to add a simple sphere. Then just shade it smoothly and export it to an FBX file. And now here is the sphere inside of the studio and to add the PBR materials to it we need to add a surface appearance instance as a child of the sphere just like so and right now the surface appearance isn't going to work because it doesn't have any color maps right here so for explaining the properties right now the alpha mode is how the alpha channels of the surface appearance color maps are going to be used so I have an overlay and transparency. Overlay means that the color is going to override the material that this sphere has right now. And the transparency means that if the color map is going to have an alpha channel, then it's just going to have transparent parts. Then the color map is the base color and the opacity of the surface. Then a metalness map is going to determine which parts of the mesh are going to be metallic or not. Then a normal. A normal map is usually just adding something like bumps, dents, and it's modifying how the lightning is going to reflect from the surface of the mesh. And the roughness is how rough the surface is going to be. And right now let's just get the materials for the mesh. And you can get them from a website called AmbientCG, where you can download them for free under the Creative Commons license. You can just go down to the materials, and here you're gonna have all of these available materials, but since this is only a tutorial, I'm just going to pick a random one, for example, this marble right here. And I'm just going to download them in 1K resolution. And here they are extracted. This is the color, the displacement, then two normal maps. I'm going to explain the difference between the DirectX and OpenGL ones in a minute. And also the roughness map right here. And just to show you an example of what these different maps are, there is a bump map which we don't really have in this material. There is the displacement, which creates 3D structures from real geometry. And there is also the normal, which is just used to read detail meshes by rendering the geometry data. So let's just upload all of these maps into Roblox now, and I can do so through the asset manager right here. So I'm going to select the color, displacement, direct X, and roughness. And here I'm picking the direct X normal instead of the OpenGL one. And both of them are compatible with each other. The DirectX can be rendered on OpenGL and vice versa. But Roblox is stepping away from OpenGL. So here I'm just going to press open so they upload. And let me talk about the graphics mode in the meanwhile. So you have the Direct 3D11, which is the DirectX version 11, which is from Microsoft. And the D3D11, this was on your normal Roblox version on Windows. Which means that if I am on desktop right now, I can just open Roblox and that Roblox version is going to use the Direct 3D. Then you have OpenGL, which works on mobile. But from what I know of, Roblox wants to step away from OpenGL and replace it with Vulkan long term. Where Vulkan is right now also being used on mobile devices. Then you have Metal on Apple and then no graphics, which isn't really used for a basic normal player. So in short, this works on PC. This is on mobile, but it's going to get replaced with Vulkan. Metal is on Apple, and Vulkan is going to be the long-term mobile solution. And now all of these maps have basically uploaded. So I'm just going to go to my images. And they are going to be right here. So to put everything into the surface appearance, I can just press on copy asset ID and just paste it in the place right here. And right now you can see that this sphere has a color, but it doesn't have any mapping data. We don't have a metalness map, but if you were to download a metal from MBNCG, you would have a metalness map right here, and you would just select it like any other of the maps. Then you have the normal map, which I need to select right here, and also the roughness. 
Oh, and I selected the color as the roughness, so let me just fix that really quickly. You can already see the reflection of the sun on this material. So you just have a sphere with mapping data on it. I'm just going to make it smaller because the texture is at 1K resolution. And overall we can basically see how the environment reflects on the surface of the sphere. And also on the side note, the surface appearance, it also takes in account the UV data of the sphere. So if I look at the sphere from the top, you can see how this material is being basically like clamped up right here on the top. And that is because I wasn't UV unwrapping this sphere or doing anything with it, and it's using the default unwrapped version. So having a surface appearance is good for 3D assets, but I wouldn't really use it as a material. If you want to use this as a material, you can go into the material manager on top and just add a new material. And it's going to be this material variant. And then you can paste in the maps right here. So this is going to be the color map. Then the normal. And then the roughness right here. And I'm just going to name this material marble. One. And it's also going to be the marble base. So now while having the sphere selected, I can just hide this window right here. I can remove the surface appearance, right? And I can go down to this material and apply it on the selected objects. And now you can see that it's going to be completely different than the previous one. And that is because it's going to have a different mapping data. This time it's going to have these edges right here instead of everything being clamped on the top. And that's because this is how the engine applies the materials to objects. But this being a material means that this sphere is going to have a material variant right here that you can select. Instead of having to put a surface appearance inside of every single asset that is going to have this material on it. Okay, and that's the surface appearance for a sphere. But I'm also going to show another thing with the surface appearances. So I did have some leaf textures right here that I can show. I'm just going to duplicate this sphere and just remove all of the IDs from the maps right there. And I'm just going to copy the ID of the leaf map and put it inside of the color. And right now it's nothing special, right? But if I change the alpha mode to transparency from overlay and just give it a minute, you can basically just see the difference how it went transparent instead of having the material and the color. And if I were to add this normal map right here, that you can see isn't a PNG, because it doesn't have an alpha channel, it's not going to affect the transparent parts. Just like so. And same with this displacement. There is no place for a displacement map, but I'm just going to put it somewhere in the roughness, for example. And that's basically it. So yeah, that is basically going to be everything for this tutorial. So if you found it informative, then you can leave a like. And if you want to support me, you can also become a channel member. But that's going to be basically everything for today. So thank you guys for watching and see ya.